Hello, everybody. This is Carla Meske. I'm a shamanic healer for animals and people, and I teach shamanism over the internet. Today, I'd like to talk with you a little bit more about what we were discussing last week, which was the ABC divination journey. This is the journey where I ask the spirits to show me the outcome for several choices. So let's, I have actually have an example for you today, another from my own life. And I will tell you what the dilemma is after I do the journey. But there's only two choices. I can choose A or I can choose path B. Okay, so I'm asking the spirits for the outcome if I choose path A. I cross between the worlds and I go down into the lower world and I connect with Grandmother Sunflower. She gives me a sip of delicious tea. Mmm, nice. A, these are for Yark, my horse, Grandmother. I have a choice to make and I wish to know which is the best outcome for him. Not for me, for him. Okay, so we have path A. I don't know which it is in my two choices. She takes me through a scenario where I'm at a waterfall like in Hawaii where there are really tall, beautiful waterfalls and there's mist all around it and I can see the water cascading into the pool but it keeps getting deeper and deeper until I'm totally enveloped in this water and I'm swimming and it's wonderful. It's really, you want to get out, but why? And, um, but then you realize you can't get out. And all of a sudden, what seems really wonderful becomes really dangerous. And so for that, there will, you need some kind of a miracle to get out of it. Okay, that's A. Now let's look at path B. I come back to the circle and to my center. I see the letter B. We walk through it. And it's a path, a really distinct path in the forest. There's um, chestnut trees all around us. Which is, I guess, neither here nor there, except they're filled with fruit and abundance and beauty. And the horse is not allowed to eat chestnuts. They're toxic to horses, but that's okay. B is the path. I see happiness and comfort, and um, B is the best path. So I come back out, and now I'm going to open my pieces of paper, and I'm going to open up path A, where I wrote down the dilemma... A is take the horse. B is leave the horse home. And I'll tell you why this is such a dilemma. I have a girlfriend who's quite ill, and she lives two and a half hours north of me in the high country where there's beautiful trees and it's incredibly lovely. And um, I have three horses here. When I leave, I need to hire somebody to come take care of the horses. And that becomes more complicated when I leave Yark home because he has special needs. So taking him with me seems to be the right path. But he's also got metabolic problems and a lot of other problems, and it's difficult on a horse to take them from one climate to another with sudden climate change. It's hard on their systems. So while it may seem obvious to take Yark with me, maybe it isn't. And path B was to leave him home wherein he'd actually be better off being home. And path A seems like it would be nice, but he ended up being in a, an emergency situation. So that settles it. As soon as we're done with this call, I'm going to call my pet sitter and ask her if she can come take care of for a couple days. And I will take my iron horse instead, my good old bicycle. And then I can go riding in the mountains and still get my mountain fix. Well, I suppose I could take another horse, but that would be more A, B, and C journeys now, wouldn't it? So, there you go. That's how the ABC journey works, and it's very helpful for getting information that you may not feel comfortable trying to determine on your own. And I'm happy to do an ABC journey for any caller or anything else you might need. Michael, do we have any callers on the line? 
We don't have any right now, but we will put out the phone number again, folks. 347-884-8245. And, Carla, I will interrupt you as soon as we get our first caller. Okay. I want to go on to my next task, then. I've been asked to do a healing session for a small dog, uh, Doxy, who has uh, recently slipped a disc and then became paralyzed last night. I do not know the status. All I know is that the dog slipped the disc and became paralyzed last night and was going to surgery. So I call the spirits of the north, the east, the south, and the west to come in for the sake of bear this dog. And I'm asking for you to please be a healing team to give Bear the healing he needs and his people the healing they need at this time and the veterinarians and the staff, everyone involved. Healing and power. And so I see us in the ordinary reality hospital and I see the status of where we are I ask that whole scene to be merged into the sacred circle of the lower world so that the compassionate spirits can have access and influence through my intention. I see Bear's spirit standing outside of her body which is a reasonable thing because when the body is um, in trouble, the spirit steps outside of it. It's a natural thing. And I see Bear's spirit comforting my friend and her husband. And now I ask the spirits to give the body what it needs to recover. And the spirits bring in the power of beautiful trees, strong wind, big harmony, and a very strong compassionate being comes in and puts power over the site of the surgery through golden light into bear, down the spine, golden light through everything. And there's a shadow in the room of the fear and the the trauma this family has suffered. And I hear the words, go after it. And so to go after this, which is the key issue trauma, I am going to engage with some very powerful compassionate spirits I know who are fierce warriors against the darkness of human nature. I meet with them. I give them my mission. I humbly bow to them. They give me a tool of great power. I come back through And I surround this entity of trauma with the great power of compassionate bright light to completely neutralize it and separate the pain and suffering from my friend and family. And then all the spirits turn to help me and support me in this. And I see how golden, beautiful light comes around the family. And an angel comes to guide the family. And I'm told my work is done. And I thank you, spirits, for allowing me this honor and privilege of helping. Thank you, spirits. And I come back into my bones. All right, I'm back. 
Hello, hello, hello. Michael, do we have any callers? I don't have any right now. Uh, well, we do have a call that just popped up. Let's see what we got here. Area code 985, welcome to the show. Can we get your first name? Maggie. Hello, Maggie. How are you? Fine. How are you today? Beautiful, thank you. What can I do for you? Uh, I would just like a reading. I have a cat. Are you? Do you do the readings about the pets? Yes. Okay. I have a kitty cat that I've had, I guess, almost three years. And I don't know if he was feral or not when I got him. He was about half grown. But um, he still bites a lot. And uh, I love him to death. <laughs> But I, I just wanted to know, his name is Ziggy, and um, I, was, I would like him to be sweeter, but I don't know, you know, I, I'm really kind to him, but I don't know how to stop him from being so vicious. What does he do that's vicious? Uh, he bites really hard, like, till I bleed. Um, he's, he's hard to get next to. Uh, you know, I pet him a lot, I'm buying toys and play with him, and... Uh, for a while, I had him locked out of the bedroom. Now I'm letting, I'm letting him back in. And uh, he attacks my little dog, my little Boston Terrier. And uh, I don't know. I, I just, I've always wondered if he was, uh, my granddaughter uh, got him from another student uh, at Ole Miss. And uh, the, the little girl that had him, he had been hit by a car, and she took him to the dorm and then had to give him to my granddaughter because they so she didn't get kicked out the dorm and then my granddaughter's roommate was allergic to cats so he ended up here so i don't know before that where he was if he was a pet or if he was maybe a feral cat you know right that All they right. found okay well let me do some work on him what color is he he's a gray tabby and where are gray you gray and brown where do you live I'm in I'm in uh, Mississippi. Okay. I'm in uh, the southeast Mississippi. All right. I call the north, the east, the south, and the west to come in for Ziggy, the spirits of all compassion and love. Amber, my teacher who helps me with cats, comes in, and she's carrying a golden yellow light with her like a lantern. It's like the, this precious light of the firefly. And it flashes and we can illuminate Ziggy and I see him. He's pensive, he's apprehensive, he's um, a little on edge. And he's looking out for I don't know what he's looking out for but he's like a little guarded and so I'm I go through and I introduce myself Ziggy I'm Carla and I'm here because your your mom Maggie doesn't like to be bitten frankly that's why I'm here she would like you to be happy without biting and attacking that's not what she tells me, he says. She tells me she wants me to be rough. Ah, so you are getting that impression. What is it that gives you that impression? Um... She pets me whenever I move in on her, and he's showing me him coming at you with a headbutt, and you're petting him then. So there's a communication problem there. All right, so I'm going to help him understand why his interpretation of your petting him is incorrect. So Ziggy, um, typically... We humans think that a cat who's coming up to us headbutting like that is asking for gentle love, not 
a rough housing play. And he says, I have un I've come to understand that. But then there's a trigger that happens around his rear legs that makes him snap and vicious again. And there's the car wreck. There it is. That's the trigger. Okay, Viggy, I've got you. We're going to go back through this pain, back through the trauma, and find your soul part. There you are, mewing. Oh, my God, you're adorable. Come here, little one. I'm retrieving the soul part of Ziggy that left when he got in the car wreck. And I bring it back now. And I breathe it into Ziggy's form. You're whole again. And you're safe here. And now Amber takes that beautiful yellow-white light and wraps it through him so that his souls will integrate so that the soul I have retrieved will become, again, powerful and functional within his bones. And he yawns and he sighs. Now, Amber is recommending that you can learn where the trigger is on him if you pet him actually with your hand above him, not on him. And you'll see when you're at the area that is triggering him, which is actually right at the small of the back, um, that's when he'll turn to bite. So then pull your hand up and just send light in. And just send light through your hand to him, not petting him, just light. And you'll help heal that area, and his soul will go in and lick the area, and the renewal will become stronger. So your job is to completely understand what triggers him, and to not do those things or completely change what the energy is of doing it and you'll help him. Thank you, spirits. And I come back. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have you noticed that his, he becomes bitey when you get your hand toward, his, toward the, the back of his back? Sometimes I don't even pet him, and he just jumps on me and bites the daylights out of me. Oh, my gosh. So I don't. Yeah, I, it's it's really been difficult. I mean, I've had cats. I love cats. And um, I have a grandbaby that comes over, and he bites her. Mm. And everybody that, you know, I, I live by my family, and whenever they visit, they have to, you know, I don't want them, I don't allow them to hit him or anything. Um, but they, they want to, <laughs> you know. And uh, every time my grandbaby comes over, he goes after her, too. And a lot of times, you know, uh, she wants to play with him and can't. And um, I play with him a little, but I'm an older lady, so I'm not into any rough housing, and I don't let other people rough house with him. That's good, because he, and, uh, he can definitely take aggression. He, he sees aggression in things that are not aggressive. Right. Yeah. I understand that about him, and I, I try to just you know, love him, and I, I studied heal and touch, so oh, I'll good. start doing that on him. Great, there you go. And, uh, so I'll start, and, and so that made perfect sense to me when you said to just, you know, take my hand above him, and uh, and I'll feel that. And uh, and I've, I've noticed all, ever since I've owned him that he's got a couple of hairs that stick out on his side uh, that shouldn't be... I've, like I said, I've had a hundred cats, so I know that that that's some kind of an injury where that hair sticks out of that. Right, sure, yeah. And I don't, I don't know what he, I don't know exactly. You know, he he was never taken to a vet, so um, you know, I have his shots and I keep him on medicine for his, you know, for worms and things like that. But I've never had him X-rayed. Great. Well, there's no need to. What's the point? Yeah. Right. At three years of age, everything's already healed. 
It is what um, it is, exactly. Right. Well, right. let's see if this uh, session helps I just love him so much. I want him to be happy. I can understand that. Good for you. Thank you for calling. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh-huh. Michael, do we have uh, another caller? Uh, we just have a few minutes left for wrap-up comments, uh, Carla. All right. So, thank you so much for being on the call today with me and being on the show. And um, Shamanic work is its a little different from telepathic readings because in shamanic work, I'm working in tight connection with compassionate spirits who actually are the ones who tell me what to do and how to do it. And so in this last session, you heard me talk about my spirit teacher, Amber, who is the one who helps me with cats. And she came in with that light form next to her, and that allowed me to see a couple things, how flashing, the flashing light form triggered the cat, how there's some kind of a triggering disturbance with light, and um, that could have just, that an energetic disturbance triggers him. And it allowed me to see through to the soul that was missing. So bringing back the soul part is really the first step of uh, core shamanic healing and asking the spirits to impart the energy which will heal the animal in an ongoing fashion is also very important to it. And so we surrounded him with that light and we brought back his soul and these are the critical features of shamanic work and speaking of cats here's my cat timmy sounds like a parrot screaming doesn't he you can reach me at spirithealer.com i have um sessions that you can order there and lots of information on shamanism and a free training where you can learn to do the shamanic journey yourself so thank you again, and it's Carla Meske at spirithealer.com, and I'll see you next week. Muted. All righty. Thank you, Carla, and uh, enjoy you coming on, and a uh, great show. And this is going to wrap it up here. We do thank you for listening, and we do thank Maggie uh, from Mississippi for our-